So in this screencast, I want to revisit the Königsberg Bridge problem, which is generally considered to be the birth of graph theory. And I also want to talk a little bit about um, some important concepts in graph theory and talk about two important theorems that will be our first theorems on graph theory. So first, let's go back and recall what the Königsberg Bridge problem is. Euler was living in this town in Prussia, and remember the, the problem is basically to find a way to cross all the bridges, but each one only once, exactly one time. And in order to try to get it to solve this problem, Euler, rather than represent it in all its complexity with a math map, simplified it a bit into a picture somewhat like this with four vertices, each vertex representing a different landmass. So, for instance, this is the D landmass over here, and here's the vertex. And each of these edges, for example, the edge from B to D, represents a bridge in the original picture. So, this gets rid of all the additional extra detail that you really don't need to solve the problem. And you'll find in computer science that's a handy skill to learn how to be able to abstract from a problem with lots of details into a problem that's relatively simple. So before we get started solving the problem, I need a couple of definitions. And these are important definitions. They get used all the time, and it's important that you really understand what they're saying and what they're not saying. So let's start out with a, a path from one vertex V sub 0 to another vertex B sub n of length n is usually written as a, or can be written as a sequence of n plus 1 vertices and n edges. Okay, so notice there's one less edge than there is vertices. And if you wrote it all out, it would be in this form. B0, an edge that connects V0 with V1, then the next edge that connects V1 with V2, all the way to a final edge, En, that connects Vn minus 1 to V sub n. And that's represented here. Each edge, E sub k, connects the vertex V sub k minus 1 with the vertex V sub k. The path is usually specified only by giving the sequence, either the sequence of edges or the sequence of vertices. And most of our graphs are going to be simple graphs, so we don't need to worry about multiple edges. So we'll just be, most of the time, using just the sequence of vertices. A path is a circuit or a cycle if it begins and ends at the same vertex. Okay, so that makes sense, right? Circles is similar to circuit and cycle, and that's basically what you're doing, although there might be some loops in there. Um, and what this means in our terms of our basic definition is that the initial vertex has to be the final vertex. So v sub 0 has to equal v sub n. And typically, we don't want circuits or cycles that are empty. So it has to have length greater than 0. An important restriction is we sometimes talk about simple paths or simple circuits. And that is if it does not contain the same edge twice. So briefly, let's, I want you to look at the path, the graph below here. And for these different sequences of vertices, say, are they a path? If it is a path, what's its length? Is it a simple path? And which one of these sequences are circuits? So pause the video for a second, and then I'll come back and give you the answers. So indeed, this first sequence of vertices is a path, uh, and it's simple path, and it's of length 4. You can see that. Just trace it out on the screen. A to E, E to C, C to B, and B to D. The next one is not a path. Um, it's got some problems here. Um, if you look at it carefully, you'll notice that there's supposed to be an edge between C and A, and there is no edge there, so it can't possibly be a path. Um, and even if it were, suppose it stopped at C, 
um, then it wouldn't be a simple path because it retraces its steps. It goes from A to E and then back to A. The third sequence of vertices also has a problem where it's trying to go from one vertex to another where there's no edge. It's trying to go from B to A and there's no edge from B to A. Finally, the last sequence is a circuit. It begins and ends at C, and let me trace it for you. It goes C to B to D to A to E to C. So that one's a good example of a circuit. Connectivity is an important, very important concept in graph theory. And luckily, it's pretty easy to understand. Um, it basically just says a graph is connected if there's a path between two, any two distinct vertices in G. So, obviously, this graph here on the left is connected. Any two vertices, you can connect them. The graph on the right is not connected. You can't connect with a path C to D. Now, when you've got a pictorial representation, it's pretty easy to see whether a graph is connected or not. As you'll find out in computer science, lots of times we don't have a picture representing the graph. We'll have something else, in which case uh, it, it's not easy to necessarily easy to visualize and we have to write programs to check whether or not graphs are connected. So now I want to talk about our first theorem and first we need one more definition the degree of a vertex represented by DEG of V is the number of edges that contain it. Okay, And a vertex of degree 0 is something is a vertex that doesn't have any edges. It's not contained in any edges. So it's isolated. It doesn't connect. It's not adjacent to any other vertex. So here's a picture of a graph. Um, and you can see, let's, let's talk about the degrees of some of these vertices. Vertex 1 has degree 3. Vertex 0 has degree 1. Vertex 6 has degree 2. It's in two edges. And vertex 5 has degree 1. Uh, this is a simple graph. If we had a loop, say here at 4, rather than be of degree 2, it would be of degree 4. It's pretty easy to show, although we're not going to do it, the handshake theorem. Namely, if you have a graph, then 2 times the number of edges is equal to the sum of all the degrees of, our vertices, of the vertices. This uh, makes a lot of sense, right, because each edge contains two vertices. So when you add up all the degrees of the vertices, you should get 2 times the number of edges. This theorem is surprisingly powerful and has a number of applications. So now we have everything we need to know to determine whether the Koenig, there's a solution to the Koenigsberg bridge problem. Take a couple seconds and think about it before we go on. And try to, again, take a, pick a starting point, say vertex D, and go through and, and think about what happens every time you go through a vertex. So before we talk about the full-blown solution, um, two more definitions we're going to have, there's sort of two things that could happen. One is we could have an Euler path, um, which would be a simple path that traverses every edge of the graph exact, exactly once. Um, or, But they might begin and end at different vertices. Or we could have something, a little stronger statement. We could say that, in fact, we can start and stop at the same vertex. It would be a circuit that traverses every edge of the graph exactly once. So look at these three graphs, and then I'll and try to figure out whether they have Euler paths or Euler circuits, or neither. So G1, that has an Euler circuit. Let's start at A, for instance. Come down through E, go to C, D, back through E, and back to A. Notice there's no restriction on the number of times you visit a vertex, only on the number of times you visit an edge. How about G2? Notice G2 is the same as G1. We just added a couple of edges. You might think that that makes things easier, but in fact, 
There is no Euler path or Euler circuit for this particular graph. Now, again, pause the video for a second and think about why that might be. What, what's created the problem? What happens when you try to draw, draw an Euler path or an Euler circuit in this graph? Finally, look at G3 and try to decide, again, whether there's an Euler path or an Euler circuit. I'll pa and pause the video while you think about it. So in G3, there's no Euler circuit, but there is an Euler path. And, for instance, one Euler path would go as follows. A to C to D oopsie, to D from D to E back to B back down to D back to A and then to B. So notice we start and finish at different places so it's an Euler path and not an Euler circuit. Again take some time and think about why we were able to draw an Euler path in this graph, graph G3, an Euler circuit in G1, but neither in G2. So finally, we're ready for the for our next term. Um, in a connected multigraph, it has an Euler circuit if and only if each of its vertices has even degree. It has an Euler path, but not an Euler circuit if and only if it has exactly two vertices of odd degree and all the rest of the vertices have an even degree. The simplicity of this theorem is actually pretty astounding. Um, all you need to do to determine whether or not there's an Euler circuit or Euler path, all you have to do is go around, visit each vertex, and count how many edges there are that it's contained in. Relatively simple to write a program to do that, um, and we'll contrast this uh, with the Hamiltonian, the Hamilton circuit and the Hamilton path problem later on, which is not so easy or elegant to solve. So finally, a couple more problems for you. Here are two graphs. Uh, see whether they have Euler circuits or Euler paths, and see if you can construct them. So I'm not going to construct them for you, but... Um, this first one, hopefully you pause the video. If not, pause it right now. Um, in this first graph here, you'll see that A has odd degree and D has odd degree. All the other vertices have even degree, so you know the Euler path has to go from A to D or from D to A. And you just need to be relatively pay attention as you go, can go through the other vertices. Because as you go to the other vertices, notice what happens. Because they're of even degree, you can go in and find a way out. So as long as you don't make any serious mistakes, you should be able to construct an Euler path. In this second graph, all the vertices have even degree. So there will be an Euler circuit, um, and you should think about how you would construct one. What makes this a little complicated is you've got all these multi, uh, multiple edges between pairs of vertices. So what you can do if you get stuck is think about what you've constructed, how you've gotten stuck, and then sort of expand it. There should be loops that you can sort of stick in the middle of the path that will allow you to expand it out. 